Holy fuck. Okay, hey guys. What's up? Welcome back uh, to the podcast. This is uh, episode 197. Um, holy shit, I'm back in the studio, man. Um, back in the studio, finally. It's been a it's it's been a minute, man. It's been it's been way too long. I'll admit it. Uh, I haven't pressed these sound effects in way too long. So let's get some going, dude. So beefy. Um, um, look at it. it. Oh yeah, dude. I've missed these so much. I've missed it. <laughs> dude, all right. All right, just just the one I wanted. Okay. Uh yeah, this episode 197. Uh thanks. I mean, fucking we're hanging by the fucking seat of our pants right now, dude. I um Is that what is that the term? I don't know. Um so a lot has happened. I haven't been here in a while. I've been on tour. Uh but I'm home for a little bit, so I thought I'd uh you know, I come to the studio, you know, and um, is that like a weird angle? I feel like there's too much room up here on this angle. Is it weird? I might move it. I'm going to move it and we'll cut to when it's fixed. And it's fixed. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we got a lot to talk about. Um, number one, um, you know, I, I forgot my uh, tripod thing like the attachment that lets my camera actually like sit on the tripod so for this one it's just on a on a stool with a box and two things of little foam and then a book and then it's up so it just goes to show you man you don't need all this fancy shit you don't need a fucking um you don't need a fucking tripod to do shit get a stack of books man who cares um but yeah, um, lots to talk about. Uh, it's been a while. Sorry, tour. Like I've said this before, but tour is very grueling. Um, you know, in 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 normal touring circumstances, it's very grueling. You know, you sort of wake up, uh, where, and then you try to get your bearings on where you are. You know, in the world, and then you go, "Oh, I'm in fucking Omaha." Okay, cool. What do I do now? You know, um, and it's tough to have a schedule of the pot. I thought it was I was gonna nail it, but I really didn't. So I apologize, everybody, especially on the Patreon. But we got a bonus episode that we're I'm gonna film today. Um, but yeah, in a normal touring circumstance, uh, it's hard to do a, a podcast regularly. Um, but what makes a podcast really hard to do is when. The thing that makes a podcast really hard to record is um, when the tour bus that you're on catches fire and then burns down. Um, And you know what makes it even harder is when that tour bus that you're in, that, that you have, currently has all your stuff on it. Because they said it was going to be there when we got back. Um, surpri- I mean, spoiler alert, it was there, but it was just uh, burned to a crisp. Yeah, man. Uh, for those of you who don't fucking know, my tour bus caught on fire. Um, so we're gonna, we could talk about that because I haven't really talked about it in, uh, in, in detail. Um, it's just like a fucking... So, okay, here's here's how it went. We did a show, um, I think it was Mesa. Mesa, Arizona was the last show we did before we went home for a break for like a week and a half. Um, so I was stoked. I was like, fuck yeah, the show was great. I had an awesome time, bought a new shirt there. Um, and then, you know, we do the show, we go home and, you know, we're packing like the day, like the day of, we're like, yeah, should I bring this home? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I, um, I don't think I need to do that. Like, I don't, you know, we're deciding on what to pack. Like the thing we kept like echoing to each other was like, well, it's fine. We're going to be back in like a week and a half. You know, your stuff will still be here. It's just be like a week and a half, you know, it'll be fine. You know? And then I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. So 
left a lot of stuff on the bus. You know, my camera, um, my fucking microphone, microphone plural, two of them, two microphones, my, you know, my cords and shit, my fucking, uh, my interface, my audio interface that I bring on the road, my, you know, a bunch of clothes, some shoes, um, cards that I bought, like collectible things that I bought on the road. I had an original in the package, unopened archer toy, an archer action figure from small soldiers gone in a fire. Um, I had a lot of stuff on that, that I left. So we go home, you know, having a great time off, you know, we're chilling, you know, it's, it's great. We're having a great time. Um, the, the, and then I leave on the Wednesday, Monday night, we go to Harry Styles the, the show live nation hooked it up with some, uh, with some awesome seats, you know, in the, in the, in the suite in the live nation suite, they fucking hooked it up. So shout out live nation. Um, and, uh, so we were having a great time. We're having an awesome time at the show. And then, um, I'm like, okay, my flight isn't until like 6 PM the next day. Uh, so, you know, I'm chilling, you know, I'll get fucked up. You know, I'll, I'll enjoy myself. I'll have, I'll, you know, I'll tie some on, you know? So I was cranking beers. You know, I had like fucking four or five Heinekens up there. I had a shot of Jameson, man. Um, so, you know, cause I was like, fuck it. You know, it's Harry Styles. We're going to, we're having a good time. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I remember like, you know, I met some, you know, fans on down, you know, cause we had. We just met some fans at, at the venue and stuff and leaving. I remember talking to some of them. They're all very nice. Uh, I wake up the next day. I'm fucking, I'm asleep on my couch. I don't remember sleep, like doing that. I guess I was so fucked up. I was like, you know what? Tonight's a couch night, I think. I got to do, I got to go couch mode, I think. So I wake up, I'm fucking like, you know, dude, it's not like a, a peaceful rest, you know, when you're hammered and you wake up, it's kind of just like you were, you're there, your eyes are closed, but that's about it, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's nothing else. Um, I wake up, I'm like, <gasps> you know, like on my couch, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm here. So I, I get up, uh, you know, I go to bed, I lay down for like another hour. Um, and I'm like, fine, you know, I still got a little bit, I still have to pack, I still have to pack, uh, my bag for like this four show stint that we have. So, you know, I'm packing, you know, take my, do- you know, I, I take my dog for a walk, I'm feeding him, you know. Normal day, I start packing, you know, I got till 6 p.m., man. Uh, and then I call Jacob. This is like 11, I think. It's like 10 or 11, and I call Jacob. I'm like, yo, should we meet at, because um, it was just me and Jacob going, Dean had a funeral that he had to be at that day. Uh, so me, I would call Jacob. I was like, yo, you want to meet at the airport at like 3, you know, be there like super early just in case. And he was like, um, that's a, no, we shouldn't do that. Our flight leaves at 3, man. Um, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean? It's, it's, it's six. I looked at the document. I looked at the tour doc. You know, it says six. And he's like, no, that's the, our, our connecting flight. That's our, that's our connecting flight. Our first flight leaves at three. And I was like, okay, great. So I have to leave in like an hour. I still have to pack all my whole bag, um, get everything ready and shit. Um, and I'm hungover as fuck. And then I get a call from my manager. So two L's already hungover wrong flight time. I have to leave in an hour. And then I get a, uh, a tech. No, I get a call from my manager. Um, and I'm like, sorry, dude. Like I can't, like I'm packing right now. Sorry. Like, I'm sorry. I don't have time. Like just text me if it's urgent, whatever. And then he texts me cause it was urgent. He texts me and he says, okay, man, uh, your tour bus caught fire and burnt to the ground. And then I saw that. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's funny. You know, and I called him back immediately because I was like, there's no fucking way he's being serious right now. And then I called him and he's like, uh, yeah, sorry, man. I, you know, but your tour bus, they were, work, you know, they did some work on the generator. It was on its way to, uh, you know, to meet you in fucking Charleston or fucking wherever the hell I, Columbia, I think. I don't know. Somewhere in North Carolina. Where was it? Charlotte? I don't know. No, Charlotte, and then the, I think Columbia, or, I think Charleston. <laughs> yeah, it was on its way, and then it fucking 
just random, you know, sometimes apparently this just happens and there's nothing like it wasn't anybody's fault. This just fucking happens to tour buses sometimes. I was talking to Dil- my friend Dylan and he said it happened. Dylan from, from Wallows, the band I used to be in. Um, he said it happened to their tour bus back in 2019. Apparently it's just like a thing that can happen. And ours was the tour bus out of thousands and thousands that were, that were to happen to. So, um, I am, I got the Wallows curse, I guess, but, um, so I'm like, okay, so all our stuff is gone. Like what, what happened? Like, did they save anything? Like how big was this fire? Um, so yeah, man, we lost a lot of stuff. We had a, we had a photo album of like Polaroid photos we were taking to the whole tour. Every show, every show we're at, we'd take fire, a bunch of fucking Polaroids. We'd write out the, write on them. We're like, this was an Austin on this day. Pictures with fans and shit. Gifts from fans gone in a fucking burnt to a crisp. I had a bunch of fucking, I had a bunch of fruit gushers on there. I had a bunch of fucking white cheddar rice cakes. I had, we had fear.com on DVD. We had without a paddle on DVD. We had fucking so many good DVDs, man. We had a Bill Murray fucking three in one gone three and none burnt to a crisp. So I was like fucking, uh, okay. So what do we do now? And he's like, we're working on it. We are going to get you SUV. We're going to get, we're going to rent an SUV and like your merch team. They're going to get a U-Haul and they're just going to fucking, we'll just do that. We'll do SUV hotel shit this weekend. And we did it. And dude, the shows were, the shows were fun. We still did them. I'm happy we didn't have to cancel anything. Like we still kept it going. Um, but like the last show we did, I think it was in, it was in, it was in South Carolina. It was Columbia, South Carolina. That was the last show we did. And on that tour, on that run. And there were a lot of people talking and it's like, yo, fourth show in a row. I'm already like, you know what? Fucking, I'm not, I don't have time for this. Okay. I don't have time for people to fucking shout at me, yell shit to be like, yeah, look at me though. Me, look at me though. Look at me though. You know, the, you know, everyone about tickets to see you, but like, what about me though? You know, shut the fuck up. You know, that's usually how I feel on like fourth day in a row on like a Sunday show, you know? Add in the fact that all my shit just burnt up days prior. I was laying in the folks, okay? I had no time for that shit. Um, and also, dude, like, I know it's just stuff. Like, nobody was hurt. It's all, like, nobody was, luckily we were not on the fucking bus when it happened. Like, our fucking, yeah, like, we, we weren't on there, okay? Luckily. It's just our stuff. We lost stuff. We can replace stuff. We had insurance. It's fine. Got a new camera. My golf clubs are, got fucking burnt up. I'm sure you guys are all fucking stoked on that because you guys hate that I golf. <laughs> but I got new ones. Okay, I got new ones coming. Um, but uh, yeah, I tweeted it. I just wanted to like just share with people because like it's not, I'm not I'm not gonna have that happen and like not tell people, you know. So I I tweeted that. I was like, woke up to find out the news that my tour bus you know, caught on fire and we lost a lot of stuff, but nobody was hurt and we're still going to do the shows. Um, just want to let you guys know. And yo, dude, the amount of, um, the amount of responses I got of like people being like, wait, I can't tell if this is serious or not. Wait, is he joking? Did this act, did the tour bus actually burn down? Yeah, dude. Yes. Yes, it did. What kind of fucking... What's the joke? <laughs> you know? People thought I was joking. What is the joke? What's the punchline? Lying about like a scary thing? Obviously, like, you could tell when a thing I'm saying is a joke, right? If it's like, woke up with a piece of poop on my head, Hashtag Mondays, you know, like that's a normal tweet that I would do that. You know, that's a joke, right? Not like tour bus burnt down, LOL. Some sort of like avant-garde post postmodern fucking joke that I don't understand, I guess. It happened. Wish it was a joke. 
Wish it was just a big old prank, and then we show up on this next tour, and our bus is fine. All our shit is there. That'd be great, you know. But uh, that's not. It's very real. I saw the. F- uh, I saw. I saw it. It's fucking scary. So yeah, I just thought I wanted to talk about it. It sucks le- losing all your shit, man. It really sucks. And it's like every day. Every every day, I remember something that was on there that I lost. You know, dude, I had this fucking kith. Kith is like my favorite brand. I love Kith clothing so much. I had this Kith TaylorMade collab that they did. And TaylorMade's like my favorite fucking golf company too. Kith and TaylorMade did a collab and it was fire. It was so fucking sick. I had this awesome shirt that I got to wear one time on stage. And it was on there. It was on the bus. Fucking burnt up. Sick pair of bell-bottom jeans that I had. Gone. Um, Black Converse. Gone. Uh, Garth Brooks tee. Gone. Bruce Springsteen tee. Gone. Dixie Chicks tea gone. Evanescence shirt. No, I forgot about that one too. Oh, uh, see what happens, man. Every day I'm remembering shit. That Evanescence shirt was so fucking fire too, man. Oh, uh, that sucks. A vintage Pokemon shirt that I had from like the year 2000 that I spent fucking too much money on. Gone, gone. Gone, man. Gone. It sucks, dude. It fucking blows. So it's like, I feel guilty because it's like, oh, my stuff is gone. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm good for it, you know? Like, I'm in a place where I'm financially stable. I can fucking get new shit. It's fine, okay? And I'm insured, right? It's like, I don't, I don't want to be like, yeah, all my things are gone. Guys, I have to buy a new camera. Like, fucking, oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to get brand new golf clubs like fucking boohoo. But it does suck. There was a lot of sentimental stuff on there. We had a drone that we won at fucking Dave and Buster's, bro. We had a drone that we won with our hard work. We spent so much time at these fucking coin shooting machines and we were getting really good at them and we won thousands of tickets enough to win a drone and the, and it's gone. The drone's gone. So, what the fuck? What, what else? My, how else? My, how, how am I going to get air, sick aerial shots now? I'm going to huck my camera. I'm already down one. I don't want to be down another one, okay? It just blows, man. It sucks losing your stuff. But I'm glad that we had insurance, and I'm glad that nobody was hurt. And I'm glad we didn't have to cancel the shows. It was we could have been so much worse, okay? Um, but yeah, we got a new bus, all right? It's going to be great. And we have a lot of smoke detector detectors and we get a lot of i got a bunch of stuff dude but yo i had this crazy moment dude it was like i was doing fine like it's great having this is going to be the whole time just talking about the fucking bus i feel like like holy shit um but like it's nice to have jacob and dean our tour manager will our merch guy andrew merch assistant thomas like we're all we all get along so well and we all like understand each other you know and we all take the piss out of like everything which is good because, and it's nice because like it sort of brought us together a lot. Like we're already like, we're already super close, but like all that brought us together. It was like a fucking tragedy that we all like experienced together. It was like, oh yeah. Remember that all that shit, sick shit we had, it's fucking gone. All our shit is gone. So like misery loves company in that sense. It felt okay. It felt a little better. We were like joking about it the whole time. Um, but like, fuck man, we have so much good shit. And it's gone. And it was I saw some people responding asking if the Fushigi caught it on fire. Okay, no. I left that I left my Fushigi at home. It's in its case. It's in the cloth bag in a drawer, okay? It's safe. It was nobody's fault. It just fucking happened, man. It sucks. It sucks, dude. But show must go on, dude. We're rocking, we're rolling, okay? We got one more like two two week run two and a half weeks we got two and a half weeks of shows and then i got like a month off so heads up like all of october i'm not doing shit okay i'm there's there isn't going to be a podcast there aren't going to be podcasts there aren't going to be videos i am taking october off okay I hope that's okay with you guys. <laughs> um, I think I need it. Um, 
So I'm really excited. There's going to be two videos in September and then fucking nothing in October. Okay. I am taking October off. It's going to be great. And at the end of October, I got some shows. And like the first week of November is the last week of shows. And then I'm done. Okay. Um, the tour is done. I'm going to cry a lot when it's done. I already know. Um, and I'm going to, and I'm going to start writing another hour, I guess. I don't fucking know. I'm excited. I'm excited to work on videos, longer videos again. Uh, cause it feels, it's a good segue actually, but I, um, I felt I, w- there's so many videos that I want to make that aren't necessarily me sitting down and talking about something and making jokes and sketches about it. Like there's just commentary. There's videos that I want to do that aren't necessarily commentary. Um, but it is so difficult to do that when I'm on the road, especially, you know, and I don't have time to, uh, I just don't have the, the time or the capabilities to like film the things I want to film, you know? So I feel like I was, I'm sort of stuck in this like commentary rut right now where I have to do it because I have like contracts that I need to do. And I also don't have the time to do something that I'm like super, super proud of because I'm trying to do something that I'm also trying to be super proud of and like give a good show to like the people who bought tickets, you know? And I'm just trying to make this hour as strong as it can be. So if I ever film it or put it out somewhere, then I'm like really proud of it. Um, And I've been seeing like, I've been seeing, I run a talk, I wanted, I wrote this down to talk about it. I think it's interesting because I have been seeing like a sort of shift in like the YouTube commentary genre um, because it's very different from what it has been for the last few years. Like when I started in 2018, 2019, it was just like, I, it's interesting because it was like, Look at this thing. Isn't it weird? Isn't this kind of cringe? Isn't this fucking nuts? Let's let's laugh and giggle about it, you know? Um, And now it's like... It's so hard to find a topic that is fresh and, like, new um, that that everybody hasn't talked about already, you know? Because it's like... There's so many of us now. Like, there's so many commentary YouTubers out there. They're all so fucking talented and so great. Even if, like, like if Danny, Drew, fucking, like, Cody, Noel, like, Chad, Chad, Jarvis, like, you know, even, like, Nick, Roe, like, there's so many, like, Noah Sampson, too. Like, there's so many fucking, like, really funny commentary YouTubers right now. And it's like, even if they all put out a video of the same topic on the same day, they're all going to be different pretty much. Like they're all going to be funny and unique in their own way. Um, But it's still tough to find a topic that is refreshing and like new when you can have like an actual, like um, like a new take on it. And I feel like there's a lot of, um, this will be interesting to, to find out from you guys, but like sometimes like I see, I see a lot of, this might sound funny. This I don't know. This might sound like sad, but I feel like I'm not smart enough <laughs> to be like to to keep up with like the new commentary YouTubers, you know? Cuz I'm like an old guy now, right? Time moves fast on the internet. I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing this for like 4 years now, dude, full time. <laughs> okay? I'm an I'm a, I'm a vet now, okay? I'm an old man, right? And obviously, I've switched like and like the people like the commentary YouTubers I watch now, like the newer ones, like I'm using like like Ro and and Noah for like for example, they're so smart. They're so smart and fu- and funny. It's bullshit, you know. It's actually bullshit. You can't have both. You can't do that. All right. Like sometimes I'll be watching them. I'm like fucking what? You- fuck off. You know. It's like fuck off. Why you have why? And you're both cool as shit. Like, everyone's so cool. Like, I don't know. I think it's just, like, a lot of... A lot of insecurity on my own end. But, like, I'm seeing a shift in, like... People being like, okay, we don't want this fucking, like, 
silly, goofy stuff anymore. We want like a, a good, like a fresh take, like a smart take on something. And I, I, I disagree. I'll say that. I think you don't, we don't always need one, you know? It's different for everybody, right? Sometimes, some people do, so that's why it's hard, but some people do want something to be like, oh, this is what their take is, this is a a new way of thinking of this, and this is how they're backing up their take with, like, thoughtful things. But, like, yo, I just, I like when stuff is just, like, I just want to fucking, like, goof around and make, like, weird, like, funny shit, you know? And I think that's fine, right? And, like, I've done videos that aren't just fucking... Sit, like sit down and watch funny like a weird cringy tiktok guy you know that's my those are you know you can always go back to them and those are always fun to do but like you know i've done different ones you know the card one magician one speed running right i've done a lot of different shit okay so get off my fucking <laughs> get off my back you know no i just think i wanted to talk about the current state of commentary uh youtube because i think it's very interesting um, and I'd love to hear your guys' feedback too and your top and your outlook on this. Cause I mean, I'm also a viewer of commentary YouTube, but you know, I, I do it as well. So it's like, it'd be interesting to know, um, from you guys, what you think about, um, the current state of it and how it's sort of shifting. And, um, I think YouTube in general is just sort of, it's sort of moving into the more like absurdist, uh, it's just, it's getting more absurd. Like, the more videos, that, like, the the videos that people are doing now are fucking insane. So, which is cool, which is great, you know, because I love, you know, I love weird stuff, but I don't know. I'm just, it's just fucking brain vomit. I haven't done this in a while, dude. I'm rusty, okay? But I, I, I thought it was interesting. Um, But the video I just did, uh, my main channel, it's called Chronically Online, um... That that was fun. I was I was worried that it wasn't gonna do well because that's just you know me being insecure again. It's like me just fucking. I don't want people to think I was just phoning in a fucking commentary video. Like I was filming in a hotel room. I was fucking editing on the road. But I put like fucking thirty forty hours into that video, so I don't think I was phoning it in. It's the same amount of time I would have done without it. I mean, like at home, you know what I mean. Um, but it was one of ten. All right, it was fucking one of ten. It was a one of ten upload, dude. It was the for those for those of you who don't know, that's the that means that's YouTube grading it. It's like that's the best out of the last ten videos is performing the best out of all of them. So it's a it's a W for sure. It feels good, man. It feels a uh, uh, that felt good because, um, like I said, I was. I'll finish this point and then turn that fucking other camera back on. But like I said, I was like worried that like, like I was gaining less and less subscribers every day. Cause I just haven't uploaded in so long. So I was like, what's happening, man? I'm spending too much time on the road. I'm not uploading enough. I'm too busy doing these shows. Uh, <laughs> so I was like fucking stressed to upload a video. So when that happened, it made me feel really good. So that was, that was nice. So thank you to everyone who watched it. I'm going to go turn this camera back on. Hold on. Oh, but yo, I forgot to say about the the bus, the bus on fire. We're turning, we're uh, we're making the best of a shitty situation. Um, we're putting out some merch, okay. Um, Curtis Town Fire Department merch. Um, T was designed by Brandon, Brandon Lapine, the homie. Uh, so. I'll put it up on screen. How about I'll send that to Sabrina. They'll put it up on screen. That's what the artwork looks like. Fucking nailed it. Um, and yeah, if you want to support us, support the, 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 the tour, support, you know, cop one of those whenever they go on sale. They should be going on sale this week. I don't know. But um, okay, should we get into some uh, some current events? Some tea? What the title of the video is going to be? Because fucking clickbait, you know, I need it. Um, we got some tea, dude. We got some tea we got to go through. So, speaking, of, I was, like I said, I went to the Harry Styles show. Okay, we had a great time. It was a really good show. Okay. 
Um, and Harry Styles, he's killing it lately, right? He's gonna he's he's doing like a million shows at Madison Square Garden. Um, he's got like two movies coming out, right? Super exciting time, super exciting time for him. Except maybe not because there's some fucking drama going on with Don't Worry Darling, the movie that's coming out directed by his girlfriend, Olivia Wilde, and it's uh, he's starring across from uh, the very talented and awesome and cool Florence Pugh, um, who's fucking such a good actor. It's bullshit. You ever see Midsummer? Whoa. So we're going to go through this whole drama that's going on because I think it's pretty interesting because um, the whole thing is something's up. Okay, something's up, all right? So this movie's called Don't Worry Darling, all right? Um, filmed back in 2020. Uh, we got this article that actually goes through all of the uh, the drama. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna go through it like a timeline, and then we'll... Uh, and then we'll talk about it, okay? So, some quick background on Don't Worry Darling. The psychological thriller is directed by Olivia Wilde and stars Florence Pugh and Harry Styles, as well as Olivia herself in a supporting role. Shia LaBeouf was originally cast in the role Harry Styles ended up taking, which is important for drama-related reasons, so stay tuned. Filming for the movie began in October 2020 and lasted until February 2021. Uh, I don't think... It's weird that you had Shia LaBeouf... And then you're like, okay, shy, I couldn't do it. Let's get Harry Styles on the horn. You know, like, that's a crazy leap, you know? Well, like, what has he been in, you know? I can... Even Stevens... Shia LaBeouf could do 1942 or whatever the fuck that movie was, but Harry Styles could not do even Stevens, okay? (laughs) I don't know. I just don't see them as like a, I don't see them as like a, I don't know, but who knows? I'm not a fucking director. I don't know shit. So December 9th, 2021, Olivia talks sex scenes with Vogue. Olivia gives an interview to Vogue and talks about how she wants to make a movie about good sex, explaining, I kept saying, why isn't there any good sex in film anymore? She also says she wants the audience to realize how rarely they see female hunger and specifically this type of female pleasure. Yeah, that's true, you know? In movies, in mainstream movies, you never see a girl freaking squirt, you know? And that's fucked up. <laughs> you know, I think us as audience members, we're sort of, uh, you know, we're sort of waiting for that, right? On my podcast, you see me, Kurt. But in movies, you never see uh, you never see that, you know? Um, this is important because Florence's take on the movie sex scenes is different but more than that in a moment um okay let me reload this now that i have internet okay uh so fans notice that florence posts about her upcoming movie oppenheimer on the same day olivia goes heavy with don't worry darling promotion leading to speculation that there's drama okay then we got a tweet here olivia wilde dedicating two is opposed to florence today and florence only posting the oppenheimer poster on her story i'm sorry i have to laugh I mean, like, that could be anything, you know? That could be just, like, even, like, contractually, she has to, like, put up a promo for that movie, you know? Like, who knows? Um, Okay, then July 30th, 2022, sources allege onset drama. A source tells Page Six that Florence was unhappy with Harry and Olivia's relationship, which began during Don't Worry Darling filming, claiming, I can tell you for a fact that Flo... Seeing Olivia and Harry all over each other on set did not go down well as Olivia was still with Jason Sudeikis when she first hooked up with Harry. Yeah, I mean, that must be pretty weird and uncomfortable to be an actor and seeing that. And being like, yo, you, what about your man, though? <laughs> you know, what about Jason? Um, the source has Jason and the kids visit Olivia on set at the beginning a few times, so I think this all made people feel a little uncomfortable. FYI, this account is heavily disputed. Okay, yeah, like, who knows, right? Okay, August 16, 2022. Florence talks sex scenes again with Harper's Bazaar. Back to the sex scenes. Florence gives an interview to Harper's Bazaar indicating that she isn't happy with the movie being reduced to its intimate moments. Okay, okay, so Florence Pugh isn't... Okay, she's not happy. 
When it's reduced to your sex scenes or to watch the most famous man in the world go down on someone, it's not why we do it. It's not why I'm in the industry. Obviously, the nature of hiring the most famous pop star in the world, you're going to have conversations like that. That's just not what I'm going to be discussing uh, because this movie is bigger and better than that and the people who made it are bigger and better than that. Go off, you know? It... I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, they did put a lot of, like, the sex scenes in the trailer. But, like, they only really put what you could put in there, you know? I mean, they could have just not. But, you know, they want to sell those fucking tickets, man. Uh, There's some inevitable reading into this since Olivia made a point to talk about the sex scenes in her interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so just she just wants... Okay. Okay, now this is the fucking tea. This is where the shit starts to go crazy, man. So Olivia... I'll, I'll say this. Olivia says that she fired Shia LaBeouf from the set from the production because you know there was there was this tension they weren't getting along um and then she says she t- then she goes public with this she's like this didn't we this is how she she's like yeah i i fired shia labeouf okay i fired him and then shia's like no you fucking didn't okay i quit because you didn't give your actors enough time to rehearse and i didn't want to do it and then she said she recorded this video being like listen I want to I want to make this right, okay? I want to freaking I think we could do this. Let me find the video. Uh Olivia Wild Shia LaBeouf video. We'll, we'll pull this up. Yeah, here it is. Shia, Shia. I just went riding Sweaty, but I wanted to reach you think Olivia Wilde put this like fucking Mr. TV logo bouncing up and down on the fucking screen? I think she has like an app for that. Or is that app? Or is that someone else? I don't know. Yeah, she's a really that's <laughs> that's there for the whole movie of Don't Worry, Darlings. Mr. TV. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> Yet, and I too am heartbroken, and I want to figure this out. And you know, I think this might be a bit of a wake-up call for Miss Flo. Yeah, I hate how she said that, and too. I know if you're open. For Miss Flo? I think this is a shot with me, with us. If she really commits, if she really puts her, her mind and heart into it at this point, and if you guys can make peace, and I respect your point of view, I respect hers, but if you guys can do it, what do you think? Is there hope? Is there hope? Okay. Let me know. It's also, she also makes it seem like it was, uh, like Florence's fault, you know, like they obviously didn't get along, which is fair, especially if you're like, you know, uh, I don't know when this took place. Was it before or after the FKA twigs? Stuff because Shia LaBeouf was like a fucking crazy, shitty, abusive guy, right? Is not was sorry, he is. Um, so especially if I was anyone, especially if like a a, a woman, right, having to work with an an abuser, be like, okay, maybe we don't do that, <laughs> okay? You know what I mean? Um. Also, yo, di- fucking directors. I don't like the way she talks. <laughs> I don't like it. Can we fix this? Is there still hope? This might be a wake up call for Miss Flo. You know, but I don't. You gotta if you gotta be like that if you're gonna direct a fucking movie. Um, but the last of the T is the rap reports that Florence will limit her "Don't Worry, Darling" press to just one appearance at the 2022 Venice Film Festival premiere. She'll be doing greetings for us from the set of Dune because she's not doing press. A studio executive told the outlet. This brings us up to date, but stay, yeah. But stay tuned for the vibes at the Venice Film Festival. Uh, you don't have to write that down ever. Um, you know what? I'm worried, darling. I'm worried, darling. I am. Because there seems to be like a, a shift going on. You know, everyone is so stoked for this movie. 
all this shit's coming, all this drama. And now people are like, well, I don't know about this whole thing anymore, you know? It w- I mean, it's got to bang, though. That movie's got to be good. Because if it sucks, man. That's a huge L. That's a huge L for everybody. I don't I feel like this like we don't I don't know every time I read shit like this it's like I fucking hate that I care you know like it's like why is this interesting to me because like if I saw this if I heard some it sucks because if I heard someone on the street talking about this or like at a restaurant I'm like shut the fuck up you know who cares man who fucking cares but like yeah I will say it is sort of, it is sort of weird with the whole um, Jason Sudeikis thing, and that must have been super awkward for everybody on the set, right? For Olivia and then Harry to be like, again, I don't fucking know any of these people. I wasn't there. I don't fucking know anything. But from what I'm reading, the whole thing seems like a little sus. Okay, there. Seems like there should have been an HR person there to be like, yo. All right. And HR stands for Harry Rockon. That was the HR person. <laughs> that was the HR person on set of Don't Worry Darling. So for Harry Rockon, it was sort of a guy uh, who would stand there. And if, you know, he did anything weird with like Olivia or whatever. If they did anything weird, if if anyone did anything, the guy was like, Harry, rock on, you know? Uh, that's what the HR person was. But you know what? Again, I don't fucking know these people. I'm going to watch the movie, and if it's good, then I'll, then fucking who cares, you know? <laughs> that's it, all right? We can look past all this shit if the movie bangs, all right? We better have a good movie on our hands. Then we do, because say it with me, every movie is good. So, uh, okay, we'll wrap this one up. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me blab on about my fucking bus and all my shit and my videos and crap. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Good to be back in the studio. This is going to be the last episode here for a little bit as well. A um, couple of weeks at least. So, But I'm going to try... I'm going to try to do some interviews with some guests, maybe. I feel like that's easier to do on the road. So um, we're going to try to do that. And, uh, yeah, fucking thank you. Like, comment, all that bullshit, you know. Check out the new merch that we're doing. Come see me on tour. Um, I'm pl- Yo, I got to say this again. I'm doing the fucking Chicago Theater, September 16th. Biggest show I've ever done. So I'd really like for you to be there. Um, grab your tickets, please. It would mean a lot. And, um, yeah, I'll see you around. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, if you want to check out more, if you're not, if you want more VRG, check out, check out the Patreon because I'm about to record a bonus episode. Uh, we're talking about freaking Sydney Sweeney and her, uh, Trump supporting parents and stuff. It'll be a good time. So, um, yeah, check it out. Link in the description. Thank you so much. Peace out. Stay safe. Goodbye.